So on a tragic day like today when we have the bombing in Brussels, 34 killed, hundreds injured, um, you are going to hear and you are already hearing from the politicians, let's go get them. In fact, I want to play you a grotesque clip from a United States Congressman, Congressman King from New York. Listen to this. This is a wake-up call, another wake-up call to Europe about how they have to really increase their surveillance, increase their counterterrorism. This is a reminder to us in this country never to let our guard down and that we have to maintain surveillance. We have to be aggressive. We can't just be on defense. We have to go after them, kill them before they kill us. Kill them before they kill us. Who is them? Now, if you have suspects, I'm in, man. Let's go get the special forces. Let's do what we got to do. If you've got good evidence, let's go get the sons of bitches. I want to get everybody who did every one of these bombings, from Brussels to Paris to Nigeria to Turkey to Beirut, let's go get all the guys who did it, okay? Now, if you want to get them before they get us, who is them and how do you know where they're coming? You got good intelligence? Again, let's take action. But if you mean broadly, let's go drop bombs, let's go kill more people in the Middle East, which is exactly what Republicans like Peter King think, and go kill them, well, I've got uh, interesting news for you. We already have. So let me give you facts. This is from CNN. The U.S. Air Force has fired off more than 20,000 missiles and bombs since the U.S. bombing campaign against ISIS began 15 months ago, according to the Air Force. That's our Air Force. That's not WikiLeaks, although WikiLeaks leaks government documents, so it's enormously accurate. That's not anybody's opinion. That's the Air Force. Now, I'll give you more detail. This is Mika Zenko, who's on the Council of Foreign Relations. He says, since January 1st, 2015, uh, the U.S. has dropped around 23,144 bombs on Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Yemen, and Somalia, all countries that are majority Muslim. And how's that working for us? Has it stopped the bombing? Is the West safe now? All oh, right, we had all those bombings anyway. Paris, Istanbul, Brussels, San Bernardino shootings. Are we safe yet? We dropped 20,000 bombs, 23,000 bombs. Shouldn't we be safe by now? In fact, General Mark Welsh says, he's the Air Force Chief of Staff, as the U.S. ramps up its campaign against the Islamist terrorist group in Iraq and Syria, the Air Force is now, quote, expending munitions faster than we can replenish them. We're running out of bombs. That's how many bombs we've dropped. Uh, in fact, he says, B-1s have dropped bombs in record numbers. So you want us to do what? Double the record? Triple the record? Is 60,000 bombs going to solve it if 23,000 didn't? One more here from CNN. The bombing campaign has left the U.S. Air Force with what an Air Force official described as munitions depot stocks, quote, below our desired objective. In other words, quite literally what I was just telling you, we're running out of bombs. We've dropped so many bombs on so many Muslim countries, and specifically ISIS in Syria and Iraq, that <laughs> the United States of America is starting to run out of bombs. And yet we are told by the right wing in our country who love war and violence, war and violence is the answer. If only we dropped a couple of more bombs. Okay. Now we go back to uh, alternate, uh, which explains the efficacy of this. And, and again, largely quoting Zenko, the guy from the Council on Foreign Relations, the expert on the issue. Remarkably, they also claim that alongside the 25,000 fighters killed, only six civilians have likely been killed in the 17-month air campaign, at the same time, officials admit that the size of the group has remained wholly unchanged. So Zenko then goes on to explain, in 2014, the Central Intelligence Agency estimated the size of the Islamic State to be between 20,000 and 31,000 fighters. While on Wednesday, Warren again repeated the 30,000 estimate. To summarize, the anti-Islamic State bombing calculus, 30,000 minus 25,000 equals 30,000. You understand what this expert is saying? He's saying, we claim that all those people we killed were civilians, except for, I mean, we're not civilians, except for six of them. Only six civilians among the 23 to 25,000 dead. Uh, but nonetheless, ISIS still has 
the same 30,000 fighters according to our estimates. Any chance that we might be killing more than six civilians? Any chance that that's counterproductive and turning people against us? And by the way, again, if you don't care that it's immoral and you think, yeah, let's go kill them before they kill us. Let's go kill their civilians. And Donald Trump now says, let's kill their family members. Let's torture them. That's literally what he said today. Torture them, kill them, kill the civilians. Who cares? Well, here's what you should care about. Does it work? And if we still have the same number of ISIS fighters as we did before the bombings, after we dropped 23,000 bombs on them and killed 25,000 people, apparently it doesn't work. Okay, no, no. There is no a answer but war. That is what we're told in the media and through our right-wing politicians. Now, I'll give you one example here of how poorly it has worked, and that's Afghanistan. Despite the fact that the U.S. dropped 947 bombs in Afghanistan in 2015, a recent analysis in Foreign Policy magazine found that Taliban control more territory in Afghanistan than any point since 2001. Look. I've outlined here before on the show what I think should be done, and some of it clearly involves force. In fact, I think we should use our special forces a lot more. I think we should use the Central Intelligence Agency a lot more and ask them to take a lot more risks. Wherever there is ISIS, there should be a swarm of CIA agents. And, and the fact that we cannot infiltrate their leadership is maddening. because. Dropping bombs and oops, they killed a lot of civilians and oops, they didn't kill a lot of ISIS fighters, that's easy. But it hasn't worked. Actually finding the leaders, the people who actually order these attacks, that's hard. But that's what we need to do if we want justice. And if we want a campaign that's actually going to work. Then the other things we need to do is to fight against the culture of radicalism, fundamentalism throughout the world. And you don't fight fundamentalist Islam with fundamentalist Christianity. Some of our generals, unfortunately, some of our leaders say, oh, yeah, yeah, no, no, let's write Bible verses on our rifles and on our missiles, and our God is stronger than their God. Literally what one of our commanders said about uh, Somalia. Has that worked? No. Fundamentalism is the problem. Now, unfortunately, we helped Saudi Arabia spread that poison throughout the world because we thought it would help us in our fight against the godless Soviets. That was a terrible mistake. Let's undo that mistake. If we could, if we help to spread that poison in the first place, perhaps we can actually counter that. We need to spend time, money, and effort, yes, fighting culture wars. And by culture wars, I don't mean you indiscriminately bomb, attack, ridicule 1.6 billion Muslims. I mean you fight against fundamentalism of all stripes. Now, if you're not willing to do that, you say, no, 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 my fundamentalists are awesome, my warmongers are awesome, my right wing is awesome, but your right wing is terrible, your fundamentalists are terrible, well, you're never going to win that battle of ideas, because you're wrong on that. That it is preposterous to say my fundamentalism is better than your fundamentalism. The way you win that fight is to say all fundamentalism is wrong, let me show you how. Let me show you facts, reasons, science, information, knowledge. And let me spread that knowledge throughout the world. But you got to come correct first. Killing the civilians isn't working. Bombing uh, random people in the Middle East is not working. Actually fighting in a smart and targeted way, both with force and more, maybe even more importantly, definitely more importantly in the long run, ideas. That is the right path. It's not easy, it's harder. A lot of people will give you easy solutions today. And those same easy solutions have led to the results we see today. I'm uh, offering a different path, a path where we actually win this war. So part of that is to be smarter, and the other part is to make sure we get the right message out, which is that this fundamentalism is killing us. It's killing us throughout the world. It's time to take that on. And you know what some of the answer is going to be today. You know it. Oh, no, it's, it's Islam, just say it's Islam. Hey, you schmucks, we know that radical Muslims did this attack. You think people don't know that? Of course we know that. You think just magically saying it like Ted Cruz wants you to do and others is just going to magically solve it? Okay, it's radical Islam. Is it solved yet? I've said it a thousand times. Hey, JR, did it get fucking solved last time I said it?